So it's ironic that purity culture is what drove you to exit a religion we call Mormonism, the Latter-day Saints, and finding out that the founder was far from practicing a purity kind of culture. <laughs> he was beyond what you would be even if you leave. You know, some people who are in cults, there's, there's the idea if you lock them in the closet their whole life, then they go out, they'll be wild. But I don't know if you yeah. can compete with how far he went with this. Well, what did that do to your thinking and after leaving? I think what happened, it's a long process because when you're born and raised in something or even just indoctrinated for a few years, your thoughts start changing and they're not your own opinions anymore. So it took a long time to be able to have relationships with boyfriends and not feel like a complete whore. Honestly, wow. because you, even if you love somebody, if you're being intimate with them, you still have those thoughts come back into your head of, should you be doing this? But yeah, it is ironic that the founder was just out of control when it came to sexual relations. And people always laugh and say, Mormonism, Mormonism is just a sex cult because they're so sex obsessed. They were sex obsessed in the beginning and they're sex obsessed now in the opposite way. Um, well, and once you get married, they tell you, you have to have as many kids as possible or you're being selfish and God won't like that. So it is kind of a sex cult in a weird way. And that takes a toll on your mental health. When you're trying to have a healthy sexual life or just healthy sexuality because it's in your biology, you're meant to be a sexual being. And when you're told that it's sinful and you're wrong for having these feelings, it takes a while to make yourself feel okay with it and to settle into who you are and to be okay with a healthy sexual expression. And some people never get over it, to be honest. Mm. Some people, it takes years. Some people immediately are like, oh, cool, I can have sex. This is great. It really just depends on the person. And it also depends on their own personal experiences with bishops or even uh, people who have been abused in other contexts outside of the church that can also have an effect. So, yeah, there's there's just a lot. And purity culture isn't the only thing that permeates your brain when you're leaving Mormonism. You still have those existential thoughts like, should I have got married in the temple just in case? Because what if it is real and I end up in outer darkness because I'm an apostate? It's just it's always going to be there. Even just the culty little songs that pop up into your head. You're like, why am I singing that? <laughs> it's just always there. Wow. So you you left, and if we if we can probe a little bit further, what year do you recall leaving Mormonism? It was 2011, I think, or maybe 2010. <clears throat> it was towards the end of my college years, and I had left where I didn't make it a big thing. I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to church anymore. This is crazy. I'm going to start being myself. And then I was lucky enough to go to a study abroad in London where I was able to distance myself from the container of Mormonism because a lot of people don't know that Mormonism is actually huge in Vegas because they, they actually settled it before the mafia came in and took over. Hmm. So <clears throat> there's a huge population of Mormons there. And at the time, I was told when I first moved there in 2008, there was a larger population of Mormons in Vegas than there were in Utah, which I found hard to believe. I don't know. We can fact check it. But point is, there was a, a huge group of Mormons there, and that was my friend group. That's pretty much who I hung out with. They were fun. We had a good time. We did a lot of activities, hiking, all of that thing. But when I left, it was a lot easier to transition out of it because I moved to London and I was no longer in that bubble and I could just explore safely without anyone looking down or looking over my shoulder, asking me why I'm not at church, all of those things. And then when I came back, I immediately moved to California. So I was lucky to be plucked out emotionally and spiritually and physically and put in a new place that I was safe to explore in. And now that you're safe to explore, what path have you taken that has helped you in your life? Because you obviously are not interested in places that have high control or are going to harm you. Um, how has that journey been? What have you found that works for you? 
What works for me is still having those spiritual experiences or feeling connected to a higher power. It's not the guy on a throne with a beard saying, you go to heaven, you go to hell. It's not that. But it is this knowing that I'm connected to something greater than myself. And it's being more conscious of who I am, what I'm presenting to the world. It's trying to be a better person because I want to be not because I feel like I have to be. That's a big thing in Mormonism is you have to be perfect. And many times people get caught up in putting on a facade because they just feel like they have to look like this perfect housewife, this perfect saint, literally Latter-day Saint. Mm. And it's really difficult. So being able to understand my flaws and be okay with them and maybe work on them, but not feeling like I'm a bad person if... I don't accept my flaws because perfectionism isn't attainable and it's not healthy to try and attain perfectionism. So working towards goals and working towards bettering myself without getting caught up in any sort of dogma. So I do like crystals. I'm wearing a crystal necklace. I do like meditation, but I'm not caught up in the new age cult, this new age mysticism. I do pray and I have a a connection with a higher power, but I feel more connected to a higher power when I'm out in nature, not when I'm at a church building, which may work for some, but it doesn't work for me. I think churches trigger me. (laughs) Um, I enjoy plant medicines. I think when done in a ceremonial way and um, a spiritual way, an intentional way is probably the best way to put it. You can connect with God and you can get information about your life or see things from a different perspective because of the new connections and synapses formed in the brain. I think that is more interesting and enlightening and exciting for me than sitting in a boring church with carpeted walls. You're going to the ancient ways. In fact, there's so yeah. just a comment on that. And I think there's some interesting points that you bring up. I have had my fair share of experience with uh, what we like to call psychedelics or something that helps you to exit the typical mindset that we live in on a daily basis and imagining the ancients who talk about overcoming death uh, by having those kind of experiences. They, I'm sure, had their fair share of experiences by uh, participating in some of these mysteries that that uh, helped them to better grasp the world, lessen fear or their daily fear that they dealt with, things like that. So I imagine you're probably doing something similar in your journey and I love this story. I'm, I'm, I hope that continues what you're doing is working for you. It's not harming anybody. It's only helping you, helping others. And I hope that everybody watching will go subscribe because I'm fairly confident. We just touched the tips of the iceberg. There's a whole bunch underneath. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And I do really resonate with what you said about the ancient ways. I think there's a lot to be learned from our ancestors and working with the earth and using its natural medicines and in healing ways. Not to say that I don't agree with modern medicine because that's not the case. I think there's a place for both. And I think it's about finding what works for you and what makes you feel whole and centered and present. And If that means a weed gummy for you, that's great. If that means blue lotus tea, awesome. If that means meditating and taking a few deep breaths, great. Painting, dancing, all of those things can be meditative. So I think that's really what it is. It's just coming back to self, figuring out who you want to be, not having any outside influences telling you who to be. It's fine to look up to people, but you don't want to be controlled by anyone. My tagline is true individual sovereignty, (laughs) finding what makes you happy and how you can help other people, like you said, not creating any harm uh, or the least amount of harm possible. And just living by that, I think, has been a beautiful thing in my life and something that I like to promote to other people, especially through my channel. So thank you for all the kind words that you have to say about my channel. I really appreciate it. Yep. And now she's a real saint. I really appreciate it. Um, (laughs) Awesome what you do. I hope you continue to do it. Our audience obviously commends you. And I hope that more people will continue to follow you and see the kind of interviews you bring to the table. I, I think we're on the same page in wanting 
the best for others. And I'm sure that we can do more down the road to discuss the intricacies of Mormonism and other harms. Maybe <laughs> I'll show up on your channel one day as well. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank you so much. There's so much to dive into, so much to uncover, and so much to dissect. So this will not be the last time we we meet. Thank you.